Ladies and gentlemen of the Shred Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing the shelf life, in other words, the life cycle of the PlayStation 4. Now, this comes to us because a recent Sony UK boss, Fergal Gara, has been interviewed, and he was discussing what he believes is going to be the life cycle of the PlayStation 4. He actually says, I think there's reasons to believe the next cycle might be a lot shorter in markets such as the UK. It's probably a sign of the times, and how much has changed in the last seven years, and I think the willingness and the appetite to pick up new technology has probably changed quite a bit. We're going to have a much better feel of this once we're a good few months in and we can see the dynamics are emerging. We also know that what we do know is that uptake for the PlayStation 4 is going to be very sharp. Does that mean it's going to be a much bigger cycle? Maybe. Or it might mean that it's more compressed into the first few years and that the later years might be a little bit softer. In other words, what he's saying is that people are buying the technology a hell of a lot faster. People are buying PlayStation 4s really quickly. But later on, you might get a situation where people are just less likely to buy it because it's just not shiny anymore. Previously, the PlayStation 3 had a shelf life of about seven years, which is pretty damn impressive. However, developers have said over and over, that was too long. We were basically unable to do what we wanted to do with our games. Developers um, were just hamstrung. They didn't have enough memory. For example, in the case of games such as Dishonored, developers straight up said, not enough memory. We had to cut down our levels. Developers who were working on titles like, say, uh, Crisis or Far Cry, I mean, they had to butcher the games. Goodness knows, knows how much they actually had to cut out. And, of course, The Last of Us, for example, as amazing as it was, I'm sorry, suffered from huge frames per second drops at times. That's just a fact. You know, we can't get around it. And I've the generation just somewhat outlived as its, um, its best before day. It, you know, they kept trying to pedal it on us. And... Microsoft are telling us that the Xbox One has a shelf life, it's going to be in our living rooms for about 10 years, and I've always, I've always contested that, I just, I, I just don't see it. In 10 years time, imagine what would happen if we were sticking with the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 for another 3 years. What more can you really get out of it? Now of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that Microsoft are going to have it as its flagship. It could be the Xbox 2 or whatever the hell they decide to call it in 5 years time. My point being that reality wise, game technology is moving on really, really, really fast. We're nowhere near enough power, by the way, to even start to emulate real life here. Nowhere near. Even the highest-end PCs are still hugely behind what we need. Um, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, developers had hoped for about 2.5 T-flips of computing power. That's what the Samaritan demo was, which Epic put out. They hoped for about that performance. Instead, we got 1.84 for the PS4. In other words, it wasn't as powerful as some developers had hoped for. Meanwhile, the Xbox One manages to just about push 1.32. Sure, the specifications of the machine are fairly complicated. We're going to get situations where the developers are definitely going to start to minimize the footprint, for example, of the amount of memory that the operating systems take. We're going to get situations where the developers are going to start to learn to push the games right uh, a lot further because they're going to understand the hardware better. There's going to be better programming tools. There's going to be better uh, you know, development kits is going to be better bug finding, and so on, and so on, and so on. But the reality is, there's only a certain amount that you can push something before you start to, well, have to just learn little tricks to try and basically fake it. As much as I loved The Last of Us, I really did. Low text, low quality textures were noticeable. It looked amazing, particularly in particle effects. But there were some huge level of detail issues, particularly if you were to quickly go from one area to another, you could see it. And it's just simply because lack of memory and lack of, well, compute power. Um, I love the game, but it's just true. Uh, low frame rate at times as well, it just somewhat chugged. And the Xbox 360, of course, doesn't get off any lighter, it's the same thing. The reality is that we look at titles already and the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are behind the PC. Battlefield 4, for example, looks better on the PC on the higher settings. And I know what you're going to say, yeah, but 
high-end PC components are significantly more expensive. I'll grant you that. But really, you don't need to spend that much for most games to run on 1080p on max settings. And think of this as well. We're at this really odd time. And this is exactly what happened for the PS3 and Xbox 360, may I add. Remember when it was released, most people, at least I know, I don't know about you guys, but for me, most people I knew, when the Xbox 360 was released, were just getting the HDTVs. Most people were either buying the cheap, uh, I'm talking most gamers, uh, most people I know were getting like 720p screens, a few had 1080 but most had 720 and that was it, right? And a couple of years later, 1080p was just the norm, the prices crashed, blah, and everyone was now 1080p gaming and of course Xbox One could only upscale, Xbox 360 I'm sorry, could only upscale. We're getting situations already where this generation of consoles is struggling at 1080p 60 frames per second. And that, my friends, is nothing compared to the 4K resolution, which is going to be a standard. A lot of new TVs in a few years time are going to be 4K. The prices are going to start crashing down. In the UK, for example, you can get ridiculously cheap prices on 1080p screens right now. Um, I don't exactly know the prices off the top of my head, but it was only a couple of weeks ago I looked, and I could get a reasonable 40 inch to a 50 inch screen, 1080p, um, for pretty cheap, you know, 300, 400 pounds, depending on the model. Think about that. It wasn't many years ago that that was going to cost you significantly more money. You know, two, three, four times, depending on obviously the size and the make. My point being that now we're getting situations for most gamers where they're becoming more no more aware, more self-conscious of this. In addition, not only have we got that, we've got things such as the Steam Machine. I Buy Power has just been released. Uh, are, are releasing their Steam machine, and for 499 US dollars, you can buy a machine that's just more powerful than Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. That's just a fact. Now, obviously, that's now. Imagine what's going to happen in two years' time. We're going to get systems that are significantly more grunt, and that's with a machine, by the way, that's 499 US dollars. Does that mean that console gaming is dead? No. I don't think so. I think we're going to get machines which are going to maybe have shorter turnaround. Now, there are some that are predicting that this is the last console generation we're ever going to see and everything else is going to move to the cloud. We're going to get, for example, the PlayStation Cloud or the Xbox Cloud or whatever it ends up being called. And I don't necessarily subscribe to that point of view. There are a couple of reasons. One, we're not really that far into the technological future where that's where a lot of gamers are going to be comfortable with that and even if they were internet connections in two three four years time isn't going to be fast enough uh, even in five six years time besides the fact it would mean that microsoft and sony would have to give up a hell of a lot of control and leverage they would have over games companies there's nothing to stop then origin creating their own services and so on which of course already have, EA have created Origin, but then it's going to become a lot more difficult for Sony or Microsoft to wrangle any real control, so I think we're going to at least see one more console generation. It's possible that it's going to be more cloud-based, so lighter hardware, more cloud-based, who knows, but right now I don't think that this is going to be the final generation of systems. I think instead we're going to see systems which are going to continue to evolve for some quite some time. Um, it's a very strange topic to speak about because it's clear that as gamers we want a lot more. Previous generation, as much as I loved the games on it, I loved my PlayStation 3, I loved my Xbox 360, you could just tell that the systems were, the games developers were becoming frustrated. And as gamers, we were just looking at the games like, well, what more can you really do? The specifications just don't change. With the PlayStation 4, obviously fixed technology. It's brilliant for some things, it really is. But the problem is, you know, GPUs on the PS4, 1.84 teflops. That's not going to improve over time unless they up clock the GPU speed. And if so, 
even if they could increase it by 50 megahertz, it's not really going to make it much more than two teflops. So that's not really that impressive considering we've already got GPUs on the PC which are like four, five, six teflops. Remember that even a mid-range PC GPU is at least three teflops now for most systems and you can certainly get more powerful ones if you so wish. NVIDIA Titan, for example, is no longer ruling the roost in terms of performance with PC games. We've got, for example, the R9 290X, which is about 400-ish pounds. I haven't looked in US dollar prices, by the way, so I can only apologize, but you can, you know, do a quick Google. And NVIDIA's own GeForce GTX uh, 780 Ti is a little bit more expensive. It's about the 450 range, but it's also significantly more powerful. It's also brought down the prices of the lower end cards as well. For example, now you can get like the 78, uh, the GTX 780 for pretty cheap. So it's just kicking up a notch and it's really making the gaming market very interesting right now particularly as we're going to be seeing a lot more new standards we're going to be seeing 120 hertz displays and developers like john carmack have already stated well that's what we want you know we really want to start pushing 120 hertz displays the video is starting to try and push their g-sync technology which basically means that in theory you're no longer going to have to worry about say vsync or vtear because basically the refresh rate of the monitor is synced up to the well speed that the gpu draws frames so it works really well regard this has been a bit of a ranty video so i can only apologize but i'll see you soon take care bye for now mm -hmm.